A very good evening uh, to all our viewers and welcome to today's edition of uh, the Evening Review. My name is Trevon Jabela, your host. Tonight on the show we are welcoming back uh, Saddam Amshirelo who again for the umpteenth time made headlines this week uh, after a quarrel with uh, the LGBTQ community uh, in relation to the remarks he made uh, recently. He is here to contextualize what he meant and uh, to respond to, the some, to some of the criticism that he has uh, received. Sir, so, welcome back to the show. Maluma, it's always a pleasure <laughs> to be here. And uh, thank you for <laughs> giving me a call to come and clarify some of the yeah. misconfusion. Because in today's world, we have a lot of confusion. Absolutely. So I think sometimes we must demystify things yeah. and just give clarity. Absolutely. And, and, and the reason why you appear on this platform a lot is because every time you, <laughs> you, you are in the firing line for something new, <laughs> inducing headlines, and therefore, I mean, we feel obliged to always uh, uh, invite you. But uh, the latest, obviously, is uh, I think you were reacting to a photo of what appears to be a boy, uh, you know, in a very compromising uh, position. Um, the, we have seen members of the gay community sort of praising the kid, and it's, it's a very, very young kid. And uh, your reaction was that uh, this couldn't have been, co that, that can't be correct. If you can give us a bit of sy synopsis on, on that. Man, uh, I saw the picture circulating on social <coughs> media yeah. of a boy, I'm, I'm not quite sure his age, but what I saw is very disturbing. Yeah. And uh, this is what people need to understand. You see, uh, Dr. Bruce Lipton, who has studied the human mind, the human psychology, says that even before a child is born, yeah. they are able to hear what is going on around their environment. That is why, let's say, for example, a child that is born to an abusive parent, mm. that child does not develop their mind, they only develop their physical structure. Because the body, while the child is in the body of the mother, all the food and all the nutrients is being directed to the muscles in order for the child to go fight or to flight. Mm -hmm. So as a result, the brain doesn't fully develop because unfortunately there was not enough food going to that part of the sector. So that's why if you do history and you study guys who are boxers and guys who are naturally violent, it's because they grew up in such an environment because your body is already being prepared to say that this is the type of environment that you're going to live in and you must be harsh in that type of environment. Mm. Now the same is also similar true for a child who grows up in a quiet environment. Yeah. These children, the, the brain gets enough food to develop and as a result of that, these children usually are good academics and things of that sort. Mm. So you can actually influence children from birth until the age of seven. Mm. That is why even in the Bible, it says that give me a child before the age of seven and I'll give you the man or the woman. Now the reason why they say that is because they understand that you can influence a child into whatever direction that you want that child to be influenced. Mm. And now what we are currently seeing is that if you switch on now your television, it's just kids being told that it's okay to kiss another boy. Mm. It's okay to be in love with another girl. So you can see that this is a programming that's being done on a subconscious level and eventually, kids, because they are very experimental, a boy will now be there thinking how it is like to kiss another boy because that's what you're told on TV, mm. to say it's okay to kiss another boy. Mm. And then this is how our boys start experimenting and eventually you do not know what happens. Yeah. The child, because society says that it's okay to be this particular thing mm. and no one is going to do anything to you. So the kids usually conform to what society says is okay. And this is a very dangerous precedence that we're currently seeing because if you go on YouTube, it's just that agenda that's being pushed. You switch on a movie, there's no way you'll finish a movie without seeing two men either sleeping with each other or two women sleeping with each other. So you can clearly see that it is now being normalized in the series, the movies, and even now with the, the cartoons of our children. Mm -hmm. And this is why we're saying that we must be able to draw a line to say that Adults are free to choose and be whatever they are, they want to be. But as for our children, we must 
step in and say, no, guys, let's draw a line yeah. and say that this influence that we're currently pushing towards our kids, enough is enough. I mean, a few years back, if you recall, on NBC, we used to have Shaka Zulu playing there. And then there was an incident where two children had created their own spears and these kids stabbed each other. And as a result of that, there was a public outcry to say that, no, Shaka Zulu must be removed from TV because it is influencing our children to be stabbing each other with these spears that they see. Mm. And some of us, we wanted to be like Shaka Zulu because Shaka Zulu was brave, he was fierce. I also had my spear as a child growing up. So, eh, Bayend Ngozi. <laughs> now, where do you think that Bayend Ngozi's influence came from? It was from the TV and the things that I was watching. Yeah. Now, we cannot allow our children, obviously, to be influenced in a negative way. Mm. Let our children grow up learning the normal ABCs as opposed to the gay BCs that are currently being shoved up our throats. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a so do you think, Michael, I, and I, I'm asking a genuine question because mm -hmm. I don't know myself. Mm -hmm. um, when a, a child eventually grows up into a teenager and uh, or whatever age from there onwards and decide that uh, their orientation is that of gay people, do you accept that from there on it's okay or do you think that uh, that is a result of some programming in the early age and therefore it must still be stopped? No, I mean, then you have peer pressure. Remember, as the kids are growing up, obviously the, this crucial stage, which is now between one and seven, that's where we need to protect them. Because whatever it is that you teach your child, your child is likely to stick with that particular thing. Mm -hmm. Now, just to test that this theory that I'm saying is actually correct, I'm going to start singing a song that a lot of people are able to relate to this song because this song they most probably learned it at kindergarten. My, 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 Jesus is mine. My, 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 Jesus is mine. He's my savior <laughs> and my Lord. But this is a song that I learned when I was in kindergarten. Now, why do I still know this song at the age of 31? Yeah. It's because it was programmed into my head. Yeah. I can tell you right now, I do not remember things that I learned in grade when I was eight years old, mm. things that I was nine years old. Some of them I can't remember. But the things that are crucial that I learned between one and seven, I still remember them. That is why today I'm still able to count from one until 20, whatever it is I'm able to count. That way I'm still able to do my ABC because that's when I learned all those things. So all I'm saying is that eventually as you grow up then, then these influences start to come. Now, our children usually confirm to what is called peer pressure. Now, if you are in a group of guys and all those guys now all of a sudden start peer pressuring you to say, no, but, you know, this thing is nice. Try it. You, why must you not try it? And, you know, people like to experiment. Mm. And the danger is in the experiment. They said curiosity killed the cat. Now, when you go and experiment with whatever experimentations there are, mm. you are likely to maybe enjoy it or like it or because out of peer pressure, because others are doing it, then that is why you also want to do it. And you see, I don't have an issue as per se with the alphabet community. I mean, for years they've been in their closets, they've been doing their things in their bedrooms, and the things have been secret, and we have been okay with that. But when they now want to bring it into public domain, then they should also be able to say there is going to be public criticism of what they want to bring into the public domain because what you do in your bedroom, we don't have an issue with it. But the moment, Toivo, it comes out that you and your wife have this type of shenanigans, it's going to become obviously an issue of the public. And we as the public have the right then to comment on that particular issue. Mm -hmm. And all I'm saying is that we must defend our children against such evil agendas that are being propagated by the West. Because if you look at our media, most of it, all the sitcoms that we look, we don't produce our own sitcoms. Mm. It's all things that we're getting. Many of us have either a cable uh, television in our house or we have internet. And who are the people who are pushing these agendas? It's the West. Yeah, I hear you. <clears throat> I think one, one of the um, points that you made in an article in the Namibian this week is when you said that... Uh, and I agree with you to a great extent that um, b because there's this notion these days that somehow 
you may not question anything relating to homosexuality. Yeah. The moment you do, it's you a express backlash. just a view. You haven't uh, because I looked at your state uh, at your at your at what you said about that kid. I don't think personally. Might be in my ignorance. I don't think that uh, there was anything particularly. You were not bashing anyone. You were saying, but y is this correct? You know, sort of something to that to that effect. But somehow, you are being asked to apologize. What are you apologizing for? Man, I think we we are dealing with a very sensitive community, and they view any view that is anti whatever it is that they are trying to establish. It's like me in the days of Hitler. The moment I'm a Jew and I don't have my yellow star on, obviously. It's, it means death for you. Now, today, with the alphabet community, is the same thing. If you do not, if you are not on the side of the Nazis, then that means you are a Jew. And what must happen to the Jews? They must be exterminated. And unfortunately, we must be able to tell this community and say, whoa, 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 guys. It does not necessarily mean that when somebody has an opinion of difference with whatever it is that you stand for, that they are necessarily against <coughs> you or that they are particularly against whatever it is that you stand for. No, I'm very happy that they stand up for themselves, that they fight for their rights, which is very commendable because mm -hmm. a lot of people do not know how to fight for their rights. But all I'm saying is that we must also have the liberty to defend our children when we see that they, our children are being misled and they are being influenced in a wrong particular way. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. <coughs> there was a time, um, I think it was um, either last year or early this year mm -hmm. when Jerry Akanjo stood up in parliament and sort of uh, said no we cannot allow homosexuality and stuff like that of course um, I mean um, I don't think that uh, he has the right to say we cannot allow because what what homosexuals do is, is their business really mm -hmm. but this this view the the, the 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 reaction to that was that no uh, people like Jerry Kanjo should be stripped of the platform because I believe very much in in the concept of free speech. Yes, uh, of course, even free speech has its own limitations. But to somehow say that uh, because a man doesn't believe in that he shouldn't talk, that cannot be correct. No, no, that that, that is absolutely wrong. And Toivo, this is where this community gets everything wrong. You see, everyone is entitled to their opinion. Now, if you today say that you are a multi-billionaire and you are 19 years old, so I must just confirm that, yes, you are a billionaire and you are 19 years old because that's how you woke up feeling today. So now I must just go ahead and uh, agree with you that, yes, Toivo is a billionaire and he's 19 years old. Obviously, I'm going to question you and say, okay, can you show me your billionaire status and how you acquired it? And when you say you are 19 years old, how exactly did you become 19? Because as far as I'm concerned, you are way past your teens. So we cannot just be in a world where somebody wakes up today and they feel that, no, today I'm going to be this, and then others must just be happy with whatever it is that you're going to be. No, unfortunately, some of us need to take time to process whatever it is that you're saying you are, and then maybe some will accept you that you are a billionaire and you are 19 years old, but don't expect everyone to accept that you are 19 and you are a billionaire. Because... We must have limitations to some of these things that we are allowing in our society. And as far as I'm concerned, in our country, sodomy is illegal because unfortunately we have not yet legalized sodomy in this country. So, as, and, and, and as far as I was concerned with the speech that you're referring to of Tate Jerry Akanjo, he was just basically airing his views and his beliefs that he has. And I think that we are all entitled to air whatever it is that we want to air and Free speech must be protected at all times. I think that should be the message that should be clear here. Mm -hmm. I have not offended anyone, but unfortunately, if some feel offended, I've already issued my apology. Unfortunately, I cannot issue it again on this platform <laughs> because uh, some say it was a bit too harsh. But my apology I've issued to those who I have offended. And if they have not watched it, I'm more than welcome to send it to them. And <laughs> maybe if they are not satisfied with that apology, I do not know else what to do. Indeed, we go for a quick uh, break and return. At OK Furniture, we know you work hard all year so you can give your loved ones a festive season filled with cheer. 
So to help you enjoy the Christmas you want, we save you money on the home essentials you need. Save on the 32-inch Omega HD Ready Digital TV, now only 1799. Or this Bradford Lounge Suite, just 899. Only at OK Furniture, where we save you money. The conversation continues. I think uh, for the sake of my viewers, it's just important to note that uh, we had invited uh, someone from the gay community to come and also counter some of the points that uh, Michael is making here. But uh, unfortunately, our guest pulled out at last minute. It would have been nice to have that balanced view. But and, and, and please, uh, it's not the gay community. We, we, we must be very sensitive when we speak about our community. Mm. It's the guys who have taken up almost all of the alphabet. So let's call them the alphabet community because when you just speak of the gay, then it's just the J in that community. So they, over the years, the community has grown. Yeah. It's very large. I understand now there is M soon to be introduced, which is basically for millionaires. So if you become a millionaire, you can also become part of the alphabet community. But as far as I'm concerned, you are still at the T, <laughs> which is at the thousand. So I'm well, not sure when you will be introduced. Yeah, there's a Q also at the end. Um, <laughs> and, and, and that's fine. It's just that, um, you know, with, ev with every addition, I suppose we have to reorientate or ourselves and, and accom accommodate these new additions. But um, in the Namibian article, uh, Linda Bauman said that uh, you must be called call order. to order. But I think it is also her who said in the same article that uh, you need to be educated about about issues related to, to, to that. Um, I don't know in what way she meant that you must be called to order because again for me free speech is important. Yes, truth, uh, free speech also has its, its, its own limitations. And I'm not here to, you are a big man, you can defend, your, <laughs> you can defend yourself. But, um, I mean, go, going forward, in, how are you going to carry yourself? What kind of, uh, are you going to measure how you say what you say? What will happen going forward with you? No, 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 no. I'm, I, Toivo, the, the one thing that we must protect is that people should never be fearful of what they ought to say. Mm. Because in today's world, you are sort of limited to say that, must I speak my mind on this particular issue or should I not speak my mind because of the backlash that might come with speaking your mind. And as a result, a lot of people are holding in a lot of things. They do not want to say these things because of fear of what the backlash could possibly be. But you, as a Namibian citizen, are entitled to say whatever it is that you would like to say. And we should never be limiting our people in terms of what they ought to say. For as long as I'm not infringing on someone's rights or whatever the case is, but as far as I'm concerned, I've not infringed anyone's rights. All I stated was my own opinion to say that as far as I'm concerned, if you take a baby and you raise that baby amongst lions, that child will grow up eating raw meat. And that child will behave like a lion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, 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 do, do you hear what I'm saying? Yes. So we cannot now say that I should not call out something that I see is wrong, is wrong. Yeah. Because what we are trying to say now is that these people, obviously, in terms of their orientation, there is no way that they can have kids. Because if I put positive and positive together, my electricity is not going to go on. But, but if I take the positive and the negative, my I will have power. But so not, ev not everybody wants a kid. No, no, I understand that not everyone wants a kid. But those who do not want kids should not lecture those who have kids on how to raise their kids. Yeah. So all I'm saying is that we must not be lectured by people who have chosen freely not to want to have kids. So us who want to have kids, we must be able to say our kids must be protected. Yeah. I, I, I want to have you on record whether what you have an issue with particularly is the issue of that kid being uh, in that situation that we saw him in or do you actually have a problem with homosexuality itself? 
No, I do not have a problem with homosexuality or with the alphabet community as per se. All I'm saying is that this propaganda that I'm currently seeing is now on the TVs where our kids are always continuously watching cartoons, on the YouTubes where they are continuously always watching their cartoons, on the TikToks and all these platforms. This is a dangerous situation because I can foresee that in the future, many of our children are going to be influenced to become something that they do not want to be. I mean, we all have childhood characters that we wanted to grow up to be as them. I grew up watching Superman. I always thought that when my eyes were red, I can now spit fire like zzz. But I can't. <laughs> but if I now have a cartoon that is constantly playing, mm -hmm. that is telling my son to say that you don't need to be strong, you don't need to be masculine, you don't need to be this type of macho man, it is okay for you to put on lipstick, it is okay for you to wear a miniskirt, it is okay for you to wear your mom's heel, and it is okay for you to kiss other boys. That, unfortunately, I have a problem with. Yeah. And that is the issue that I was addressing, to say that continue being whatever it is that you want to be, but leave our children out of this affair. Yeah. Let them grow up, let them be normal kids, but do not mm. shove everything down our throats. Because in the beginning they said, no, we are not going to come after your kids. But now we can clearly see that they are coming after our kids. The tricky situation, because you, you are constantly painting a picture, and it's not the wrong picture, you, you're constantly painting a picture of this perpetual propaganda, as you labeled it, that somehow that, that is being imposed on children. We, ha we now have a situation where gay couples are conceiving kids, uh, elsewhere in the world, those who did not conceive kids of their own, they have adopted children. Uh, you spoke about a child growing up among lions, and uh, the same children here who grow up, uh, who are being raised by gay couples. Um, what, what do you say about that, especially in terms of growing up into that environment do you think that um, a non-gay child will emerge out of that relationship being not gay if they, if they choose to be? Or do you think it's almost automatic they will, they will turn out to be gay? You see, the, the first role models is usually your parents, the people who raise you. So what are the odds that you would want to be like your father? Or Because now it's confusing because there are two men, so I don't know now who's the father and who's the mother. <laughs> it's fathers. I don't know now because they have a child, so I don't know. One has to obviously play the role of the mother and the other has to be the father. So what we are saying is that these things are going against some of the core ethics of just nature. You see, in nature, the reason why you are standing is because you are produced by a man and a woman. Now we want to turn things around and obviously make it seem like it's normal for things to be that way. But we all know that that is not a normal society. Mm -hmm. But now this society, unfortunately, because the Westerners want to be using this sometimes for regime change and all these things, because if, let's say, you live in a country and you do not allow gays and all of these things, guess what? You are labeled as a dictator and all these things, and then very soon tomorrow we hear you have been sanctioned. And just because of a few individuals who are choosing not to follow what nature ought allowed to them to be. Because I'm a man. I cannot wake up tomorrow and say I'm a woman. Mm -hmm. Biologically, I'm not. I, I hear you. I hear you. I think we have a few seconds left. I think the, the only question is that, uh, the last question, and if you can summarize it mm -hmm. in, in, in responding, do you agree that we must have robust conversations as Namibians yes. of different orientations and say, Let's, because this, I just sense a lot of intolerance um, that if you bring up the, the gay subject, you are labeled, you're homophobic. Can I not question homosexuality issues without being labeled? Yes. Can we have a, a robust conversation? Man, I think we have not yet reached that maturity, especially given the fact that some people are still sensitive about this issue. But it's high time that we start having these discussions as a country to say that, how do we move forward? Because we cannot 
shy away and ignore that these people do not live amongst us. But how do we then go ahead and try and see how do we assist these people? Perhaps maybe we need to get mental clinics. Uh, perhaps we need to get them psychological counseling. Because some of these people, it's maybe trauma that they are dealing with and they do not know how to deal with it. And we must start to thoroughly investigate to say, where are these issues coming from? What decided a man that he now wants to be another man's woman in some of these cases? And you know, when insanity says that it's coming, it doesn't say, hey, I'm coming tomorrow. It just reaches you and now you are insane and now you start doing things that are out of order. And when we look at you, you don't seem to perceive as if you are a normal person, but perhaps you are a normal person, but we need to understand and perhaps heal you and perhaps guide you into becoming back, uh, into returning to the normal society. <laughs> yeah, Michael. <laughs> Thanks a lot. I appreciate it's always it. a pleasure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I, I don't think uh, that... Uh, yeah, so, so that was tonight's show uh, with uh, Michael Amshalelo. He's, uh, he's received a lot of criticism after he voiced his concerns around uh, a child that was uh, seemingly... And I must quickly give a disclaimer. Uh, the views that I'm currently saying are my personal views Thank in you. my private capacity. <laughs> Thank you. So please do yeah. not come to the Namibian Sun and come and want to burn it down because, yeah, they are the ones they. No, 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 no. Yeah. It was my private views yeah, and all of them. Absolutely. That was tonight's show. Thank you for watching.